This is the Pavo Femto. It's a tiny little micro drone that fits in the palm of your hand with its 40 millimeter props, but it runs on 2S batteries so it can rip. And this is the Meteor 75 Pro. It's a tiny whoop that's not so tiny with 45 millimeter props that runs on 1S batteries, which means it's quiet and easy to fly. Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions from new pilots trying to decide which DJI 04 drone they should choose. So in this video, we're gonna take a real close look at the Pavo Femto. We'll compare it to the Meteor 75 Pro, and we'll also talk about some other options, like the Pavo 20 Pro, which is rocking the DJI 04 Pro, and the Pavo Pico, and the Pavo 20. Because even though these drones are from last year, they're very similar and they can run DJI 04 with the Pavo Femto bracket. So keep watching because by the end of this video, you'll be in a better place to decide which DJI 04 drone is right for you. And if you want to learn more about any of these drones, I have in-depth reviews on all of them on my channel. I'll put links to those videos in the video description. All right, let's get into it. The Pavo Femto weighs in at 54.8 grams. And with the recommended 2S 450 milliamp battery, it weighs 82.4 grams. And with this setup, I can get about five minutes of flight time. Depends on how I'm flying. We'll talk a little bit more about batteries and flight times in just a minute. The Meteor 75 Pro weighs in at 37.1 grams. And with the recommended 550 milliamp 1S battery, it weighs 51.4 grams. And I usually get four to five minute flights on this setup. Again, it really depends on how you fly. The Femto has a 75 millimeter wheelbase with these relatively small 40 millimeter props on 1102 14,000 kV motors. The Meteor 75 Pro has an 81 millimeter wheelbase with these relatively large 45 millimeter props with the same size 1102 motors, but since the Meteor 75 Pro is designed for 1S voltage, these motors are 22,000 kV. With these larger props and a lightweight design, the Meteor 75 Pro doesn't make that much noise. Here's what it sounds like. And with smaller props and a heavier design, the Pavo Femto does make a little bit more noise. Here's what it sounds like. Both of these micro drones are relatively quiet and lightweight, but the Pavo Femto is much faster with that 2S power system. And since it is a heavier design, it has more inertia when you're ripping around, which makes it much more agile and much more capable for freestyle flying. The power to weight ratio is very high and it doesn't feel like a normal tiny whoop. It's a little ripper and it's a blast to fly in public places or at your local park. And that small form factor is great for hitting gaps and it just cuts right through the wind. What really makes this drone shine is that DJI 04 light. The FPV feed is crystal clear and the range is more than you could ever need on such a tiny drone. You can fly the Pavo Femto indoors and it's very stable when you put it into angle mode. And since it's so tiny, it does do very well in tight indoor spaces without creating hurricane force winds. But that power is there when you want it to rip around outdoors or in larger spaces. Now the Meteor 75 Pro is much more stable and easier to fly with its larger props and 1S power system. And since it doesn't make as much noise, it's great for flying around in public places or around people because most people will just look at it as a toy. It doesn't do nearly as well outdoors or in the wind as the Pavo Femto. It just doesn't have the authority that the Pavo Femto does, and that combination of larger props and a lighter weight design means that the Meteor 75 Pro feels floaty. Where the Pavo Femto cuts right through the wind, the Meteor 75 Pro catches the wind like a kite, and I found myself having to really compensate for the wind a lot more so I wouldn't get blown into the trees. But since it is very tame, it's great for new pilots and it can be really fun to do close proximity flying and you can get some super fun shots with that DJI 04 system. The Femto is the smallest drone in Beta FPV's Pavo series, which all use a carbon plate with a camera bracket bolted on top and plastic ducts on the bottom. 
This carbon plate is two millimeters thick and it is nice and stiff to prevent vibrations. And these plastic ducts do have a little bit of give to them to provide durability to survive crashes. These are functional ducts, not just prop protectors, and they do add a little bit of efficiency for longer flights. The plastic ducts are pretty durable, but if you do break them, replacements are just $4. If you get a drone without a DJI-04, you will need to assemble the camera mount, but it's not very difficult to do, and there's loads of videos on YouTube showing you how to do it. Here's a tip though, make sure to put this bracket on the 04 camera the right way. These little clips go on the sides, not up and down. It's kind of a pain to remove it if you put it on wrong. Ask me how I know. The camera bracket is bolted onto the carbon plate with rubber grommets and step screws to prevent over tightening, since those rubber grommets need to be soft to isolate the DJI 04 system from vibrations. This bracket does a very good job protecting the DJI 04, yet we have easy access to the USB port and the bind button on the other side. This camera bracket allows for unlimited camera tilt, which is great for people who want to fly fast, but it's a little bit tricky to adjust the camera angle because as you tighten down this screw, the camera itself will want to turn. So you need to hold it in place with your finger as you tighten that screw. The soft mounting system does a great job of isolating the camera from vibrations, and it is super soft, but the DJI 04 is so sensitive to vibrations that it's hard to eliminate jello completely. We'll talk about Jello in just a minute. The Meteor 75 Pro is a tiny whoop style drone, which means it uses a one piece molded plastic whoop frame like this. It's very soft and durable, so you're not likely to break it, but if you do, a new frame will cost you five bucks. The Meteor Canopy does use the same soft mounting system as the Pavo Femto, but the Canopy itself is much more minimalist and lightweight, and it's not as strong and doesn't protect the air unit nearly as much. As you can see, there's a lot of flex, and these mounting points are a potential weak spot. When you compare the frame and camera mounting systems side by side, you see where the extra weight is in the Pavo Femto. The Femto uses Beta FPV's F4 20 amp all-in-one board. This is the same board you'll find in the Pavo 20 Pro, the Pavo 20, and version two of the Pavo Pico. It does have a beefy three amp battery eliminator circuit to power the DJI 04, it also has a built-in ELRS receiver, and this little red wire is the ELRS antenna. The antenna comes from the factory tucked underneath this battery mount, but I did carefully bend mine out like this to allow for space for a battery strap and also to get better reception. Even with this tiny little antenna, the range is very, very good, and it's more than most people would ever need for a tiny little drone like this. All of these drones have plugs for the motors, which means if you do burn up a motor, it would be easy to replace. This board doesn't have a standard USB connector, and you do need to use this provided USB-C dongle to connect to Betaflight, so don't lose it. The Meteor 75 Pro uses the Matrix all-in-one board, which has most of the same features, but it is a 12-amp board designed for 1S, and it has a special BEC designed to power the DJI 04 without brownouts all the way down to 2.8 volts, and it's what allows the Meteor 75 Pro to power the DJI 04 on 1S batteries. The Femto frame comes with a tiny whoop style molded plastic battery mount, and you're supposed to slide your battery in and out of this plastic cage. It works fine if you're using Beta FPV's 2S 450 milliamp batteries, but other battery sizes or brands won't fit. And since I have a pile of 2S batteries, on my Femto, I cut the battery cage and use a battery strap so I can use different size and brands of 2S batteries. This is similar to the mount that you'll see on the other Pavo drones, like the Pavo 20, and it works much better. On the recommended 2S 450 milliamp batteries, I am able to get five minute flight times, which I think is pretty good for such a powerful little drone. With this battery mod, I can easily fit larger batteries for longer flights, and these 525 milliamp and 650 milliamp batteries do fit fine, but if you're shopping for batteries, I would recommend the Beta FPV Lava 450 milliamp or 550 milliamp 2S packs for a good balance between flight time and power to weight ratio. I wouldn't go over 550 milliamp because these 650s felt a little bit heavy to me. 
When it comes to the FPV feed that you see in your goggles, the range and penetration of the DJI-04 system is awesome. It's more than you would ever need on such a tiny little drone, and the image you see in your goggles is crystal clear. The field of view is about 117 degrees, which is narrower than most other FPV systems. I found this to be a little bit limiting when I first started flying the Pavo Femto, but I got used to it after a few flights, and now I don't mind it. It does help to set the aspect ratio to 4 to 3 to avoid the additional crop you get with 16 by 9. I usually record all of my footage in 4K because it does look so much better, but some of the footage you're seeing in this video was recorded in 1080 because I didn't have much space left on the onboard storage. Having no SD card to record to is a real limitation of the DJI-04 Lite, and when you film in 4K, you can fill up that onboard storage very quickly. Normally, I would use ND filters to control my shutter speed, but unfortunately, you can't use ND filters on either of these drones, at least not that I know of. If you guys know of any ND filters that will fit the Pavo Femto, I would love to hear about them. You can use Rocksteady to smooth out your footage, and it will create some usable clips, but the results are far from perfect. You can also run your footage through GyroFlow, which did give me much better results than Rocksteady and made my footage much nicer to watch. But again, my results weren't perfect. All the marketing words like 4K and 60 frames per second make you think the DJI-04 footage is gonna look like a cinema camera. But the truth is that the footage looks more like a cell phone from 10 years ago. To be fair, the DJI-04 Lite is a very impressive camera system when you consider it only weighs 8 grams and it only costs about 110 bucks, and it's what makes it possible for Beta FPV to create these super capable and pretty cheap little digital micro drones. And if you're just flying for fun, or if you're a new pilot, you will love the DJI-04 Lite. But if onboard image quality is a priority for you, you might want to have a look at a system with the DJI-04 Pro. This is the Pavo 20 Pro, which uses 2.2 inch props, it runs on 3S batteries, and it has a much more robust frame and camera mounting system, and most importantly, it's rocking the DJI 04 Pro. When it comes to the quality of the onboard footage, the DJI 04 Pro is a giant leap above the DJI 04 Lite. There really is no comparison. 04 Pro footage just blows 04 Lite footage out of the water. Not only is the image far superior, but the DJI-04 Pro has D-Log-M color profile, which gives you much better dynamic range. You can record to an SD card, and you're not limited to just the onboard storage. And most importantly, there are no Jello issues, so Rocksteady and GyroFlow work very well, and the footage you end up with is pretty usable. In the right hands, the Pavo 20 Pro can be a professional video production tool. I would never say that about these other DJI-04 Lite drones. But, and there's always a but, with the DJI-04 Pro, the Pavo 20 Pro also costs twice as much, which means it's in a different category. So why am I even mentioning it in this video? Well, if your priority is getting high quality cinematic FPV footage and you're put off by the limitations of the DJI-04 Lite, I want you to be aware of this option. I do have detailed videos of the Pavo 20 Pro already on my channel, so feel free to check those out if you're considering this drone. And if you want a fun little ripper and you're on a budget or you just like to tinker, you might also want to consider the Pavo Pico or the Pavo 20. Now these drones are from last year and they were designed for the DJI 03, but they can both be upgraded to DJI 04 with the Pavo Femto Canopy. They do have the same all-in-one board as the newer Pavo drones, and they actually have some advantages over the Pavo Femto. You can get them in Crossfire, if that's your thing. I got my Pavo Pico with Crossfire, which is why I have this blue antenna in front. The Pavo Pico has the same 1102, 14,000 kV motors as the Pavo Femto, but the Pavo Pico has 45mm props, like the Meteor 75 Pro. So in a way, it's a happy medium between these two drones. The Pavo Pico also comes with a battery in the box, and the Femto does not. The Pavo 20 has larger 2-inch props and 1103 8000 kV motors and runs on 3S batteries, so it's more capable in larger outdoor spaces. It also comes with an LED light strip, 
which you don't get with the Femto. Keep in mind that both of these drones were pretty heavy with the DJI 03, and that weight was a real limitation on their performance. But with DJI 04, you're gonna save around 30 grams, so they'll fly so much better. I actually prefer the way my Pico Femto flies over the real Pavo Femto because it's basically the same drone with larger props. And the Pavo Pico and the Pavo 20 are on sale right now because they're from last year. So if you like a bargain, check out the links in the video notes. All right, you guys, it's time for my conclusions. The Pavo Femto is a super fun little ripper. The power to weight ratio is insane and flying this drone is a blast. If you're looking at the Femto as a new pilot, make sure to practice in the simulator first, then take it out to an open field or somewhere where you won't lose it in a crash. And if you're looking for something a little bit more forgiving and easier to fly, especially for your first drone, you might want to consider the Meteor 75 Pro. With that 1S power system, it's not nearly as powerful. But for learning or flying indoors, that can be a good thing. And these 1S batteries are cheaper and they're easier to charge on the go. And if you want to save a little money, you might want to grab a Pavo Pico or a Pavo 20 and a Femto Canopy and just make yourself a, a Franken Femto like I have here. It's cheaper and it has some advantages over the real Femto like larger props and more extras in the box. And if your priority is getting the highest quality cinematic FPV shots possible and you've got the budget, have a look at the Pavo 20 Pro. It's on a whole different level as these DJI 04 light drones, but when you're ready to step up to DJI 04 Pro, the footage you can get from it is miles above any of these other drones. Which drone is best for you is gonna come down to your specific use case and the space you have to fly in. I live in a city and I have to drive pretty far to fly my larger drones, but I can fly the Pavo Femto just about anywhere, including in crowded city parks like you saw in this video. And when it comes to flying just for fun, it's pretty hard to beat the weight and price of the DJI 04 Lite. What do you guys think of these options? Which one is best for you? If I missed anything, please let me know, and don't forget to check out the video description because I do have detailed reviews of all of these drones on my channel. All right, you guys, that'll do it for this one. I'll see you guys next time.